The Labrador Retrievers were created to be sociable companions as well as capable working dogs. In the early 1700s, one of their major roles was as a fisherman's assistance, dragging nets, pulling ropes, and recovering fish from the frigid North Atlantic. The modern Labradors are just as hardworking as their predecessors, they work for hunters as retriever dogs, support dogs, show competitors, and search and rescue dogs, among other occupations. However, most labs nowadays avoid hard labor in favor of being pampered and adored by their owners. Some labs, on the other hand, are still used as working dogs. But there is lots more to know about the friendly dog. So stay with us. In this video, we curated 8 fascinating things you should know about the Labrador Retriever, especially for potential owners and dog lovers who just love to learn about different breeds. But before we get into the furry details, welcome to Animal Digest. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to get your weekly dose of animal and pet content. Also we like to hear from our viewers, so leave us a comment below. Fun Facts The Labrador Retriever dog breed is recognized for its friendly, charming, and outgoing nature. As such, the Labs have earned the title as the most popular dog breed in the United States of America, by the American Kennel Club, and is also one of the most popular dog breeds worldwide. But, are Labs really good with children of all ages? No more second guessing. Watch until the end, where we answer and break it all down for you. Now, without further ado, let's highlight 8 more interesting facts you should know about the United States of America's most popular dog, the Labrador Retriever. Number 1. For most pet parents, we want to know our pet's origin, so let's dive in. Labrador Retrievers are native to Newfoundland, a Canadian island off the northern Atlantic coast. In the early 1700s, Labs were known as St. John's Dogs, named after Newfoundland's capital city, St. John, where they served as companion dogs and provided assistance to local fishermen. In the early 1800s, the breed was imported to England, where they worked for hunters retrieving prey. By the late 1800s, the Labrador Retriever became almost extinct in Canada due to the government regulations and tax policies. Families were only allowed to have one dog, and keeping a female was extremely expensive due to high tax, thus female puppies were removed from litter. However, in England, the breed survived and was later recognized by the Kennel Club in 1903 and by the American Kennel Club in 1917. The Labrador Retriever has been the most popular dog on the registry with the American Kennel Club since 1991. Number 2. Coat Colors and Physique The Lab's coat comes in two layers, which protects them from the cold and dampness and aids them in their function as retrieving prey for hunters. The top coat is straight, short, and thick, and the undercoat is weatherproof and soft. Their coat colors include yellow, black, and chocolate. In recent years, chocolate and yellow are the preferred lab colors. The male Labrador's weight ranges from 66 to 85 pounds and is 22.5 to 24.5 inches tall. The female's weight ranges from 55 to 70 pounds and are 21.5 to 23.5 inches tall. Number 3. Grooming. The labs do shed a lot, but grooming a dog doesn't come any easier than with a lab. Purchase a good vacuum cleaner and brush your lab on a daily basis to remove loose hair, especially if they're shedding. To keep them smelling pleasant and clean, a bath is recommended every other month or when needed. Brush their teeth at minimum twice or three times a week to prevent excessive tartar and bacteria. To avoid gum disease and bad breath, cleaning their teeth twice a day is even better. Trim their nails at least once per month, if they scratch you or their nails click on the floor when they are walking, then your lab's nail is too long. Check their ears weekly for redness or a bad smell, which could suggest an infection. To help avoid infections, wipe inside your dog's ears with a cotton ball moistened with a gentle, pH-balanced ear cleanser. Do not clean the ear canal, instead, clean the outer ear only. Because Labradors are prone to ear infections, 
Ensure to clean their ears after every occasion that causes your lab to get wet, such as bathing or swimming. This aids in the prevention of infection. Number 4. Living Needs. The adoring lab needs to be together with his or her family and is not a backyard dog. A lonely, bored lab is likely to dig, scratch, or find other harmful channels to release their energy if left alone for too long. The lab, like other retrievers, is a mouthy creature that is happiest when he has something to carry in his mouth. They like to chew, so keep robust toys on hand at all times to avoid having your price positions chewed up. It's also a good idea to leave your lab in a crate or kennel while you leave the house to avoid having them chewing on things they shouldn't. Which will most likely get them in trouble. Number 5. Activity Level. Labs vary in their levels of activity, but they all require activity, both mental and physical. A half-hour walk every day, a tussle at the local park or playing fetch are just a few activities to help a lab release its energy. A puppy, on the other hand, does not require long walks and should only be allowed to play in intervals, like a few minutes at a time. Retrievers are known to be workaholics and will work themselves to exhaustion. It is the owner's or caretaker's responsibility to decide when to stop playing and training. Number 6. Training. Some owners believe that because labs have such a fantastic reputation, they don't require training, but that's not the case and is a huge mistake. A hyperactive lab puppy will quickly develop into a huge, unruly dog if not properly trained. Fortunately, labs respond well to instruction and are usually good at obedience training. Therefore they often do exceptionally well in obedience competitions. Start your puppy at the kindergarten level, which will teach your dog good canine etiquette and help them feel at ease with people and other dogs. Enroll them in training that emphasizes positive training methods, which praise the dog for doing things correctly instead of punishing them when they don't. Raising a lab puppy requires special care. Avoid having your lab puppy running and playing on particularly hard surfaces like pavement, as their joints are not fully matured until they've reached approximately two years old. Until then, have them play on grass or soft surfaces. Number 7. Health. Labrador retrievers are typically healthy, however, they are susceptible to some health issues, as are all breeds. Although not all labs will contract any or all of these illnesses, it's important to be mindful of them if you're thinking about getting one. The labs may develop the following illnesses. Hip dysplasia, which is a hereditary disorder in which the thigh bone does not fit securely into the hip joint. Elbow dysplasia, which is a hereditary disorder that affects large breed dogs. Cataracts. Epilepsy. And cold tail, which other retrievers are also prone to, is a benign, but painful condition that causes the dog's tail to suddenly get limp. They are also prone to ear infections. Number 8. Are the labs good with children and other pets? The labs are typically fond of children. They enjoy the ruckus that kids create around them. They'll cheerfully attend kids' birthday celebrations and sometimes will wear a birthday hat if the occasion calls for it. However, they must be trained on how to behave around children, and children must be taught how to behave around the dog. Like most breeds, children must be taught how to interact with dogs. They must be constantly supervised during interactions to avoid biting or tail or ear pulling. Also, children must be taught not to approach dogs when they are eating or sleeping, and to avoid provoking them like taking their food or treats away. No dog should ever be left alone with a child, no matter how friendly it is. If a lab has been exposed to and trained to interact with other cats, dogs, and small animals, they are more likely to be friendly with other pets as well. If you enjoyed this video, please watch our next video. The German Shepherd vs. the Golden Retriever, which is a must-watch for potential and new owners of either breed.